Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Eric Parker with One Number, and in this week's Tableau tutorial, what I want to do is to go through uh, a method for setting up custom date filters for your Tableau dashboards. Um, so you may know about being able to provide a slider or a drop down where you can pick different years or months, or even a relative date filter in Tableau where you could say, "Give me this week, give me last week, give me the last five weeks," um, but those options aren't completely customizable. Um, so let me go ahead and walk you through what I mean by that and how you can set up your own uh, custom date filter with pre-curated examples that you want your users to be able to select from. So I've got this kind of generic sales dashboard. What's happening with sales? We've got sales by segment at the top, we've got weekly sales in the bottom left, and we've got our top 10 products in the right. So let's say that I would like to give my user six different ways that they can filter this dashboard by date. Uh, so those would be year to date, previous year to date, last year, assuming I mean the whole year, uh, month to date, previous month to date, and previous month. Um, so I will say that I originally intended to shoot this video in late December, but it's now early January. So some of the year examples are gonna look kind of crappy when they're filtered down to like this year is only gonna have less than two weeks worth of data, but that is life with a three month old baby. You make plans and a lot of times they are laid to waste. So let's go ahead and, uh, and we'll dive into creating these. So the first thing that I need to do is to create a parameter uh, that would have these options listed for my user. So I'll hit this little drop down here in the data pane and say create parameter. I'll call this my date filter. And to make this simple for myself, I'm going to do this, what might look a little bit counterintuitive to you. I'm going to change the data type to integer, create a list, and I'm going to create a list that looks like this. So I'll have one, two, three, four, keep double clicking and adding them, five, six. And I'm gonna name these for my user here. So my options would be year to date, previous year to date, previous year, previous tier. Yeah, that works too. <laughs> month to date, previous month to date, previous month. Okay. So again, it's an integer, but what my user is going to see is these display as values. So I'll go ahead and show this date filter, uh, show the date filter parameter, I should say. So notice that that date filter parameter showed up under parameter section in my data pane. I hit the drop down. I said, show parameter. And now I have all these options listed here. Uh, but right now they don't do anything right there. It's just a, a list. So if you haven't used parameters a lot, um, I'll drop a link in the description below. Um, we've done a more extended webinar where we go into parameters in more detail, what they are and a bunch of use cases. For the sake of this video, um, it, parameters is just a way that you can allow your users to input a value or change an option that you give them. Um, that would then ideally affect the visual. But in order to affect the visual, this parameter needs to be hooked up to a calculation or a filter or something like that. Right now, it isn't. It's just a random standalone dropdown with some text options. So what I need to do now is I need to create a calculated field, and I'll call this my um, parameter date filter. So... Uh, here's how this is going to look. I'm going to use the case function. So I'll say case date filter. Okay, so a case uh, function is sort of an alternative to an if statement allows you to create a list of conditions. So I would say when one, then the year of my date field needs to equal the year of today. So remember that one or the first option was year to date. So as long as my data doesn't have any future uh, dates in it. All I have to do is say the year of that date has to equal the year of today. So I'm shooting this in early 2022. So this should only return for me 2022 data. Previous year to date, this is going to be a little bit more interesting. So I'll say when two, then year 
of date needs to equal year of today minus one. So that, that logic would just give us, that's actually our logic for previous year. So while we're at it, let's just go ahead and do that. When three, then all it needs to be able to do is uh, this, the year of the date needs to equal the year of today, 2021. So, or uh, the year of today minus one, I'm losing my mind here. So if it's 2022 minus one, 2021. However, this piece is actually gonna get more interesting. So it needs to equal last year and the date part day of year of the date field needs to be less than or equal to the date part day of year of today. So if you haven't used date part day of year before, what that logic does is it just figures out what day of the year is it. And it returns a number one through, I guess 366 because of leap years, but to simplify it, we'll say one through 365. So today is only the 10th day of the year, so this should only return me one through 10. If it was, let's say, February 9th, that would be, if I'm doing my math right, that would be the 40th day of the year. So if we kind of get the idea there. So we now have all our year logic worked out. Now onto the next logic, which is the month data. So I would say when four, then I will use the date difference function. I think that's the easiest option here. The date difference in months between the date field and today needs to equal zero. So basically it's the current month. Uh, when five, then was that the previous month to date? So I'd say when five, I'm gonna steal some logic here. Then the date difference between the date and today needs to equal one. And so here we use date part day of year. Now I'm looking for day of month. So the day function actually does that for us. Day just returns the day of month, one through 31. So, and the day of the date needs to be less than or equal to the day of today. Okay. Um, I probably don't need to wrap that first part in parentheses, but I'm going to do it. it just makes me feel better. It makes me feel happier inside. Um, all right, so now I'll say when six, then, and that's just the previous month in general. So once again, this sort of simplifies things for us. It's just this part. The uh, month, the date of today, uh, uh, sorry, yeah, the date diff, that part. The date diff in months between the date and today needs to equal one. So if all of that worked right, and I don't have any syntax issues, I should just be able to put end and I'm done, but I'm not. So there must be something off. Uh, let me do a little uh, digging around here. I'm assuming it's a parenthesis. Um, no, that part's all right. So I wasn't mad about that. Oh gosh, this is always fun. When it tells you there's a missing parenthesis for a character, 371. Oh yeah, let me count them out, Tableau. That sounds like a great time. Um, well, if this takes too long, let me end up <laughs> pausing the video for a second. <laughs> And we're back. So I haven't solved it yet, but I did realize that it might be helpful to uh, look at how we can do some troubleshooting together. So you end up with a big calculation like this, and it's like, where is my parenthesis issue? I have no idea. But here's what I was just thinking we can do to whittle it down, is I'm just gonna go through line by line and just comment out anything past the second row. So we can see it says it's okay when it's just the first section there. When one, then year of date equals year of today. So we know that row is good. So we go back in, uh, win two, that one seems good, no errors. Win three, no errors. Win four, no errors. Win five, ah, now we have an error. So that is maybe a helpful way to try and catch it if you ever have a situation like this, just to sort of try and whittle it down by process of elimination. Uh, so give me just a second here. Now we can hopefully figure this out. I think I got it. I think I just put a parenthesis in the wrong place. That needed to go after the one there. Simple as that. And hopefully this second to last row here doesn't have any errors. Oh, but it does. 
Oh, but it does. All right, we'll go ahead and move that. I think it was just the same error that I copied and pasted from above. Um, when? I think actually that whole section there is wrong. Month between the date and today. There it is. Equals one. Perfect. We're good. All right. So this calculation set is valid. Run away. Uh, let's just hope that it works here. So we hit OK. I'm going to drop this parameter date filter um, on the filters card and just select true. And that's it. So I'll select true. Now this looks kind of silly when it's just weekly sales year to date because I don't have that much data. But if I did previous year to date, it would look similar, just two weeks. But if I did previous year, in theory, we should see something more like 52 weeks. Okay. So I need to do a few things here. First, this parameter date filter, I'm gonna apply this to my other worksheets. So selected worksheets. So let me, let me do that one more time, just slow that down. Hit the drop down on this filter, apply to worksheets, selected worksheets. I'm gonna apply it to the other two that are on the dashboard. And one other thing, I think in order to get the top 10 selling products in that date range, I may need to add the filter to context, which just makes sure that it happens before like top 10 filters. Let's go ahead and select that. Turns out it wasn't an issue actually, so it's okay, but it also won't hurt us in this situation. Um, so yeah, everything should be filtering down now based on that selection. Go back to the dashboard. Now I need to bring that filter in. So I'm gonna hit this drop down uh, on any of the worksheets since it's applied to all of them. And oh, actually not the filter, rather I'm gonna add the parameter. So go to the parameter, add the date filter, and now, depending on what my user selects, right, it's going to change and filter the entire dashboard. So what you want to add to that custom date filter is completely up to you, right? Um, it just comes down to, are you able to write the logic to get it to limit it to year to date or previous year to date or whatever that might be? Um, so just a couple closing thoughts here. Uh, one is you, so again, you might be thinking about like, okay, but still, why did I do the numbers instead of just doing the text? In my experience, uh, for longer text options like this, like previous year to date, there's just more opportunity to have things like typos, right? Whether you, uh, miss the capitalization of some spelling or you have an extra space that you don't realize the numbers just simplify the calculation in my opinion. So going back to where it is, parameter date filter, it's so much easier to say when one instead of when year to date, when previous year to date. Like, I just find that a little bit simpler. Uh, if you haven't used parameters a lot, another important thing to know is that uh, changing the parameter in one place changes it across your entire Tableau workbook. So that's why all the worksheets are changing when we make that selection. And uh, I was just thinking about this. I think I'm going to um, save it for another video if you're interested. Um, something I was thinking about is we could even set up a custom date filter like this so that it filters simultaneously. Like maybe this is sales by segment, you know, versus last year. And on the top shelf, we have, you know, whatever the, comp the comparison would be last year to date. And then on the, you know, this row here, it's year to date. So we can kind of compare them oh, year-to-date home office sales is 5K, whereas previous year-to-date, it was 3K. So you kind of get those side-by-side, side, or you can do things like have arrows, which indicate if those values are decreasing or increasing compared to the uh, time period that they should be compared to. So just let me know. Uh, feel free to like comment or, or just you can add questions in general no matter what but if that sounds interesting like yeah i'd love to see a custom date parameter which is filtering two ranges simultaneously um let me know and uh yeah we could uh we could look at setting something like that up so uh thanks for uh checking in for this video i hope that this has been helpful um, to be able to see how you can use a parameter in tableau to set up your own custom date filter uh, so yeah we look forward to catching you on another video here soon